Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to add certain constraints to your columns in your database using Flask SQL Alchemy. So by constraints, I just mean uh, conditions on your column. So whenever you insert data, these constraints will be checked and if they're valid, then the data will be inserted. If they're invalid, then an error message will come back. And of course, this will make much more sense once I actually start writing the code. But before I get into the code, I want to show you the Flask cheat sheet. Uh, on the cheat sheet, there are a few things that can help you if you are kind of new to Flask and it's a really good reference. So if you haven't downloaded it already, just go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask cheat sheet and you can download it there. I'll also have a link to it in the description below. So what I have here in the code is the basic setup for SQL Alchemy in Flask. Uh, I have my database URI and I have the instantiation of SQL Alchemy. So what I'll do is I'll create a table and I'll call this my table. It inherits DB model. And I'll be doing everything through the uh, command line here in the Python REPL. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a column and this will be my ID column, which will be the primary key. So to set the primary key, and that is one of the constraints, primary key will be set to true. Now, if you want a compound primary key, you can have more than one column have primary key equal to true. So for instance, if I say other ID, and this is also an integer, then it will become a compound primary key between ID and other ID. But in this particular example, I'll use one primary key, but if you wanna use multiple, you can go ahead. And using multiple primary keys, it's, it's a little more advanced in SQL, but if you know what you're doing, then pr multiple primary keys can be useful for you. So the first constraint other than the primary key that I want to show you is the unique constraint. So let me call this unique call and I'll create a column and I'll make it a string, let's say. And if I set the unique flag to true and it's false by default, that means that once you enter some data into this column, no other column that follows can have the same data. So if I insert say Anthony as the value of unique column and then a thousand rows later, I try to insert a row with unique column equal to Anthony, it will fail because Anthony is already in the table. So that's what unique means. So I'll set that to true. And then I'll create a not null column. So DB column. And let's make this, this a string as well. And to make it not null, I'll put nullable is false. So by default, nullable is true, but I'm setting it to false, which means that there always has to be a value in this column. I cannot get away with not putting any value into this column. So if I do try to do that, I will get an error in return when I try to enter the data. And then finally, uh, this isn't quite a constraint, but I'll just show it for demonstration purposes. Let's call this an integer. So what I want is a server default. So there are two types of default in Flask SQL Alchemy. A server default is an actual default set on the table in your database. And then a default in SQL Alchemy is something that is handled internally in your Python app by Flask SQL Alchemy. So if you want your table to be changed, and that's what is happening with the previous three columns, the actual table is being modified to have these constraints, then you use server defaults. If you don't want that, you only care about it happening in your code, then you can use a default. So they pretty much do the same thing, but let's say you were to create this table using Flask SQL Alchemy, and then you were to use some other application to access that database, then the default that you create in Flask SQL Alchemy won't apply because it's in your Python app. But if you set a server default, it's on the table, and that will affect both the Python app and whatever other app you have out there. So in this case, the server default needs to be a string. So since it's an integer, I'll set the server default to be 10. And I'm using MySQL. So I think I have PHP my admin up right now, I do. Um, but there is another type of constraint you can use and that's called a check constraint. So let's call that check. And DB column, and I can just make this an integer as well. But the problem is MySQL doesn't support this. So if you're using a different database that actually supports check constraints, then you can do this. So it would be db.checkConstraint. And then inside, whoops, inside you have some kind of condition. So in my case, let's say check, 
is greater than five, meaning that the number that I put into this column needs to be greater than five. If it isn't, the constraint fails and I will get an error. And it's very similar to um, uh, for less than, for in, not in, equals. You can do whatever you want, but MySQL doesn't support it, so I'll comment that out. And I'll give you a link to the SQL Alchemy doc so you can see the check constraints. So if you have a database where check constraints are available, then you should be able to figure out how to use them from the docs. So I'll save that, and I will start up my Python REPL. And the name of name of my file is constraints. So from constraints, import db. And I think I spelled that wrong. So from, yeah, I spelled constraints wrong in the file. So from constraints, <laughs> import db. Okay, so now I'll do db create all. And now if I go to PHP my admin and look at the structure of my table, Let's see, structure here. So the first column is the ID column. So auto increment has been added automatically because it's the lone primary key column. And this primary key button, I guess you can call it, is, is pushed in. So it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you see how the key next to primary key is silver, but for the others, it's gold. The silver one means that it's active. And then the unique column, the unique button is pressed in, so that means that this column is unique in the database. It has to be unique. And then we have the not null column, and you see that the null is no. So on unique column before, null is yes, meaning it doesn't have to have a value in it. The primary key, null, is also no because you have to have a value for the primary key. And you can see the column after default null is yes because I didn't specify it. So by default, the columns are nullable, but for the not null column, I set it to where it has to be a value. And then finally, the default column, you see the default value here. Uh, the first few are none, null, none. But for defaults, I just have 10 there as the default, meaning if I don't put any value into that column, then it will automatically be 10. So now let me show you how that works. So I'll create a row, let's call it row. And I need to call my table. So ID will be generated automatically. So unique column, let's say Anthony. And then the not null column, I'll put none. So none means null in Python. And default column, I'll put nothing. So I forgot to import constraints import my table okay I can do that again all right so now if I add this DB session add row and then if I try to commit it I should get an error and I do and the error down here is telling me that column not null cannot be null so let me roll back everything probably roll back by itself but now if I create the row my table and then unique call is Anthony and then not null equals here is a value and then I'll put nothing for the defaults and then I add this to the table DB session add row DB session commits I don't get any errors so now if I browse I see one column in my database. So the ID is one, which is automatically generated for me. The unique column is Anthony and not null is here's value. Default is 10 because I didn't put anything there. So now let me try something else. Let's try row two, it's my table. Unique call equals Herbert, not null equals stuff. And default equals, let's say 20. So now I add that DB session add row two, and I missed the S there, and DB session commit. Now if I take a look at the records, I have two for the ID, Herbert for unique call, stuff for not null, and the default is now 20 because I actually specified a value. So now let's see what happens when I try to duplicate one of the unique columns. So row three equals my table, Unique 
call equals Anthony, which already exists, not null equals other stuff, and let's say default equals 30. So DB session add row three, DB session commit, and I get more errors, and let's see, it says integrity error, duplicate entry, Anthony for key unique column. So the database is preventing me from inserting another row with unique column equal to Anthony. So as you can see, these are just exceptions. So in Python, if you want to catch these exceptions, you will use uh, try catch or sorry, uh, try accept. I'm thinking of um, JavaScript or C sharp. So how about this? I'll try one more time. Let's see. Try db session commits and there should not be a colon there so try db session commits and then accept and then I'll print out there was an exception And I have there was an exception printed out because this try block didn't work correctly, but the accept block caught the exception and it prints out that there was an exception. So just know when you're writing your code and you're going to commit values into the database, if you have any kind of constraints, then you want to make sure you're putting them into a try accept block. So if one of the constraints isn't met, then you can capture the exception and handle it appropriately. You don't want to just give the user a random error like that because there's nothing they can do with it. So that's really all I want to show you for constraints in Flask SQL Alchemy. Remember, if you want to use check constraints, then uh, it depends on your database, but it's pretty much the same thing as all the other constraints that I showed you. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. And if you haven't gone to prettyprinted.com, you can check out this Flask SQL Alchemy Basics course, which uh, has a few videos on uh, how to do various things in Flask SQL Alchemy. It's a free course, so you can easily sign up for it. And if you want to sign up for my other courses, you can check those out as well. So go to prettyprinted.com for those. And that's it. So. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.